The first time I met Amy Winehouse was the day I shot her album cover, Frank. Um, I was introduced to her by Tyler James. He wanted me to take photographs for her for Island Records as an example for what she would like to do for her album cover, which up to that point no photographer had seemed to be able to get. The day I met Amy, we left my apartment, we wandered down Commercial Street, dropped into the off-license, picked up a bottle of white wine, and nipped around to the back of the Golden Heart uh, pub to Princeton Street, which is where we shot the album cover for Frank. Uh, unbeknown to us that day, that was going to be the image, but we were really just having fun. We'd taken some spare clothes, a Roberts radio, borrowing two dogs from a, a guy who just happened to be there at the time, walking his animals around dusk. Uh, it was kind of a perfect little moment that we managed to capture. Uh, it really sort of just symbolized Amy at that point in her life, I think. Shortly after I'd shot that run run of film with Amy, uh, I got a phone call from Nick Shumansky at 19 Management uh, asking me to work on the inlay for the album. Due to the scheduling difficulty, we decided that we'd have to try and meet up in New York where Amy had some time free between recordings in New Jersey and Miami. I knew we needed to do something because we had a very short time to really sort of capture for the inlay and uh, I remember telling Amy to see what she could pull out of her bag and started getting into her luggage, she started pulling curlers out and putting them in her hair. She put on some interesting dresses and she put her hair up into this beehive and all of a sudden she transformed herself into something that you know I'd never seen before. It was something from the 60s. It was old, it was Motown, but it was really classic and, and kind of an amazing look to see her with. Uh, we went further out into the hotel that day and we photographed around the Ritz Towers uh, and we managed to get some really beautiful photographs. When Amy died, I was approached by people to do various things, but to be honest, it was all a little bit close to the bone, and I was pretty upset at the time. Uh, I really didn't want them to be used commercially, and I kind of felt wrong. It felt like an invasion of a private moment that we'd had when we were younger, all of a sudden being brought out into the open just because this awful thing had happened, and I, I didn't really want them to come to light that way, um, so I held on to them. Recently, one of the images has gone into the permanent collection at the National Portrait Gallery. Uh, and I think the reason they're now coming to the light of day is I was lucky enough to sit down with Asif Kapadia, who made the Amy film. I decided it was probably a good time to bring these images to light. From his own uh, comments on my work, I realized that they weren't just a special memory for me to hold on to. They were really beautiful images that everyone should see and everyone should experience. They're an important part of her life where she's transforming from being this young girl into a recording artist. She's just about to release her first album. She's experiencing brand new things for the first time and I think this small photographic moment captures that. And I think it's important. I think everyone should see it. And I think everyone should be able to smile and remember Amy the way that I do.